The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD, available from SDC Publications. In the following video, a title block and border are shown surrounding the views of the object. However, if you created this drawing using the directions provided in Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD 2017 or a later edition, you are instructed to draw the views inside the magenta rectangle and the border and title block are not visible. So please ignore the border and title block when following the steps shown in the video. Later, when it's time to complete the title block, click on the Layout 1 tab located in the lower left corner of the graphics window and the title block and border will become visible in paper space. It is at that point that the text in the title block can be edited simply by double clicking on it. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a dimension style that complies with ASME Y14.5-2009. The way I'm going to begin this is by going to my dimension toolbar and picking on the uh, bottom icon right here and that will open my dimension style manager. Uh, another way that I can get there, I'm just going to close this for a second show you some other ways to get there, uh, is to go to annotation over here and uh, pick on the down arrow and select the second box right here that will open dimension style. Another way is go to my annotate uh, tab on my ribbon and come to dimension and there's an arrow that points out to the side if I pick on that that will also open it up so there are at least three ways you can you can access this. The current dimension style is called standard and uh, this is the one that AutoCAD defaults to and gives you and whenever you start a new drawing so what I'm going to do is that one's already highlighted as you can see I'm just going to pick on new. What, the, what happens next is it opens my create new dimension style box and uh, so it asks for a new style name I'm going to call this ASME and I'm going to also add small radii to it and I'll explain that a little bit later and so when I pick continue what it's going to do is take the current settings that are in the standard dimension style and apply them to this and that's what I'll be editing so I'm going to select continue that's going to open up my uh, uh, manager here that has a group of tabs that run across the top and uh, so where I'm going to get these settings from is in the back of chapter 5 of Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD 2014. Uh, but uh, you know you could also find these by looking in the ASME um, standard or, or somewhere like that. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is look at my baseline uh, settings. The baseline spacing and that's the uh, the distance between two dimension lines that automatically is applied when you use the baseline dimension style uh, is defaulting to 0.38. Now what ASME says about that is that it should be a minimum of 0.38 inches so I could actually leave this at 0.38 and I think I'm going to do that for today. Uh, the book shows you to set that at 0.25 that just gives you the minimum style or the minimum distance that you would want to have. Over here where it says extend beyond dimension lines, I'm going to highlight that and type 0.125. Uh, over here on in this box where it says offset from origin, uh, I can set that to uh, 0.0625 or 0.062, something that would give me about an, an eighth of an inch. Let me do that again, 0.062. I'm sorry, a sixteenth of an inch. That's the gap that you would have uh, between the edge of the object and where your extension line begins. I think everything else is okay in this tab. So the next time I'm going to tab I'm going to select is called symbols and arrows. On this one, I want to make sure that my arrowhead style are close filled, that my leader arrow is also close filled. I want to set my arrow size to 0.125 in this case. Center mark style, I'm going to select line. I'm going to keep this at 0.09. My break size is 0.125, that's good. Um, I'm going to check, this radio button is already checked, that's the one I want. My jog angle is 45, this is 1.5, so that all looks good. The next tab is the text tab, I'm going to select that. 
work my way down a standard by block none for my text height I'm going to set that to 0.125 and what we usually do in ASME is we match our text height to the arrow size and so that's what I'm doing here I'm setting that to 0.125 and I have my arrow set there as well as I work my way down through here centered centered left to right all that looks good I want this to be on horizontal uh, 0.09 for offset from dim line all that looks good so the next tab I'm going to select is the fit tab and these are the settings that actually affect whether or not I have a small radius style setting or a large radius style setting and as I said I'll explain that a little later but since this is going to be called ASME small radii the settings that I want to select are both text and arrows and I want to check the top box here that says place text manually so let me get that guy checked have a little trouble getting it there it goes it held and use an overall scale I'm going to keep that at one we're going to place this it says uh, text placement beside the dimension line let's just keep that there and the next tab we're going to select is primary units we're going to pick on that one uh, we're going to go with decimal and the precision which is the number of spaces that uh, it's or number of decimals to the right of the decimal place of the decimal is going to be set to what most of the dimensions are for the project and looking at the chapter four projects I see that most of those are, are at two places of precision so I'm going to let it default to two places of precision and as I work my way down through here one thing I want to do when I'm dimensioning using uh, inches as my unit of measurement it's what we call the imperial system is I want to suppress leading zeros on any dimension that's less than one inch in value and so I need to check that box over here it refers to angular dimensions I'm not going to make any changes in the angular dimensions area now one thing you should check is alternate units and make sure that this box here is not checked because we don't want to display alternate units if we did check that we might be able to uh, display uh, units in millimeters right next to our uh, inch units but we don't want to do that on this one the other one on our tolerances tab over here we want this to be set to none because on these drawings we're not trying to show a tolerance now if we did want to show a tolerance we have some options here that we could show symmetrical tolerance limits which would be a, a stack of, of uh, dimensions with their tolerances applied but again all I want to do on this one is set this to none for now at that point I'm finished with my ASME small radii so I'm going to pick OK and you can see the ASME small radii now is one of my options if I select it and I pick set current that will become my my new uh, dimension style now what I want to do though is take the ASME small radii and using it I want to create another ASME dimension style called large radii and to do this I just pick the new button and you can see it's going to start with the settings that are in ASME small radii and so the only change I'm going to do up here is I'm going to delete copy of and I'm going to change small to large radii and then I'm going to press continue and the only change I need to make is in the fit tab so I'm going to pick on fit and I'm going to go back and make the changes that will change the way that the uh, leaders will look for large radius and this also works for a large diameter as well and what I'm going to pick is text over here and I'm going to pick place text manually and draw dim line between extension lines so I'm going to check both of these boxes and then select OK and now you can see I have uh, a new dimension style called ASME large radii now I'm going to pick on ASME small radii and pick set current because that's the one I want to use first in my dimension style now I'm going to select close and uh, I'm going to go back to my home tab and check and make sure what layer I'm on I'm on the dimension layer because I want these dimensions to go in on the dimension layer and I'm going to show you how to place some dimensions first I'm going to use linear dimension I'm going to pick on linear I'm going to snap to this corner and then I'm going to come over here to the quadrant of this circle 
and move my mouse right into here and pick. And you can see that I placed my first dimension uh, between this corner and to the center of that of that hole right there. Now that was using the linear dimension and so what I'm going to do for my next pick is go over here and pick baseline dimension and I'm going to come to this corner and pick and then press escape. And so what happened is it created a baseline dimension that used the first pick point for my linear dimension. So let me quickly run through that again. I'm going to start on linear, I'm going to snap at this corner, I'm going to go to the quadrant of my circle, I'm going to move right down into here. The rule on ASME is to move at least four tenths of, a, of an inch away from your part. So I've placed my linear dimension, I'm going to go straight to baseline, I'm going to pick at that corner and press escape and it places that baseline dimension. I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to pick at this corner, I'm going to go to this quadrant of the circle, move out right into here, move out at least four tenths of an inch and pick a point. I'm going to go straight to my baseline dimension and go to this corner and pick, press escape. And you can see I've got those dimensions in there. And you'll notice I haven't placed a dimension or I haven't placed a center line on these. There's a reason for that and I'll show you what it is. Um, I'm going to put a dimension on here and because this is a, a hole I'm going to use a diameter and I'm going to put a dimension on this and because this is a radius I'm going to use the arc tool. So the first one I'm going to choose actually is the arc dimension tool, I mean the radius dimension tool, sorry. I'm going to pick on radius and it says select the arc or circle. I'm going to pick this arc and uh, you can see that it added center lines or center marks of that, it's also giving me my radius. So I'm going to pick right there on my radius. It tells me that's a radius of 2.00. Now remember that this dimension style is on the small radii dimension style. I'm going to come over here and select the diameter dimension tool and I'm going to pick the circle and I'm going to drag it out over here to the side and pick and you can see that I have a diameter on that one, a diameter of 1.22 while I have a radius over here. Now what I want to do is change this so that I'm using the large uh, radius style and what that's going to do is start my radius at this corner and it's going to come out in this direction and actually put the the arrowhead on the opposite side. So here's a good way to do this. Select your annotate tab and then go pick that dimension and then go to your dimensions uh, panel here and you'll see it's, it says ASME small radii because the current setting for that dimension is on the ASME small radii dimension style. Pick on the down arrow and go select ASME large radii. Pick that, press escape and you'll see that it changed that and so I'm going to pick on that and drag it over just a little bit, get it away from this other one over here. So what I have here is the large radii style and the small radii style. The small radii just points to the edge. Now if I wanted to force that to the inside I could pick on that, come up here to my dimensions tab again, pick on the down arrow, pick large radii and actually put that in there. You'll notice that I lost my center mark. Now if I lose the center mark there's a tool on the dimension uh, toolbar right over here that says center mark. Pick on center mark come pick the larger of those two between the, the circle and the arc, pick on that and that will place another one on there. So sometimes you, uh, you'll you have to do that, sometimes you won't. Now I want to show you something. I'm going to pick on this and uh, I want to extend this center line out 0.25 inches past the edge of this radius right here. And to do that and know exactly where it is, I'm going to first I'm going to pick on it and drag it back to where it's in line on the edge. Then I'm going to pick it again and drag it in this direction and type 0.25 and press enter. And then press escape. So that actually is 0.25. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to, I'm going to pick on this dimension or this center line. I'm going to drag it back to the edge and pick. I'm going to pick it again, drag it straight up and I, I uh, want to make sure that it's going in an orthogonal direction so that it's not going off at an angle. I'm going to type 0.25 and press enter and press escape. Alright, so at that point I've added my dimensions. Uh, I've shown you the difference between large radii and the small radii style. If I want to go back to the small radii style, I'm just going to pick on this, go to annotate again. It, now it tells me that's on large radii. I'm going to pick here, pick small radii, 
and you can see how that changes the dimension style that I have. So that's how you create an ASME uh, dimension style.